Tyrannosaurus, one of the most dreadful predators of primeval times, it could develop a speed of up to 50 kilometers per hour. The terrifying creature was equipped with six dozen sharp fangs 30 centimeters each. And as a bonus, it had perfect stereo vision to spot prey from afar while staying out of sight. And all of this despite its massive size. But what if I tell you all these adaptations of the famous Lizard King seem absolutely trivial compared to the evolutionary tricks of other, less known creatures from deep antiquity? Let's do our own excavation to find out how a half-reptile, half-pig survived the most terrible cataclysm in Earth's history and probably even became humanity's forebearer. We'll also discover what other ancient monsters literally had razors for teeth. In short, what incredible animals of ancient times did you never know existed? Animals we know really well have absolutely crazy ancestors. The species we know today only began evolving after the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, which annihilated dinosaurs over 60 million years ago. It might sound strange, but paleontological finds from that period turned out among the most unusual. This is a mammal called Dodicurus. The first representative of the species appeared on Earth two million years ago and became extinct relatively recently, only 8,000 years ago. This, at the same time, Dodicurus was herbivorous and relatively harmless. Scientists think it was the ancestor of the modern-day Singulata. However, today's successors of the walking rocks weigh no more than 50 kilograms, that is, less than Dodicurus' tail alone. A similar thing happened to megatheriums, which were among the largest mammals ever living on Earth. Their oldest remains date well back to 20 million years ago, and the most recent ones are only 11,000 years old. A single grown-up animal could be as long as 6 meters, and they weighed around 4 tons. When scientists first came upon a megatherium skeleton, they long argued about which family to include it in. It appeared there was nothing like it on Earth currently. However, somebody eventually compared the megatherium's paw with a limb of a modern three-toed sloth. The structure was practically identical. So it turns out giant sloths ruled Earth millions of years ago. Moreover, they were most probably just as slow. And when early humans began hunting megatheriums, the giants simply couldn't escape. But there are other prehistoric monsters that could repel anyone. Feathered Gastornis, which prospered about 40 million years ago, wasn't much bigger than a modern-day human and was practically unmatched in bloodthirstiness. This bird could by itself easily deal with a large mammal, like a modern horse, let alone a smaller species. Gastornis' beak was so broad and powerful that it could cut its prey in half in a single movement. But instead of wings, Gastornis only had tiny, underdeveloped limbs, which means flying was out of the question. Though the ancient bird's modern cousins, ostriches and kiwis, don't strive to conquer the heavens either, and aren't quite alright about it. The next prehistoric animal did reclaim a new environment. Ambulocetus lived about 50 million years ago and was among the first mammals that opted to live underwater. The extended streamlined body shape enabled it to move there fast, while its limbs resembled fins which, however, ended with ordinary webbed fingers. That means Ambulocetus could easily walk whenever it wished, but at the sight of a predator it literally sank to the bottom. Scientists believe those weird hybrids gave rise to whales and orcas. But unlike most of the other species, today's marine mammals exceed their ancestors in size, as Ambulocetus weighed only 500 kilograms, which is 200 times less than the blue whale. But the further we go back in Earth's history, the more unbelievable and at the same time less known beasts we can find there. 
Today, even a preschooler can name a dozen different dinosaurs, but they share the planet with other, no less fantastic creatures. Amid the Mesozoic era, you wouldn't be as impressed by the long-known T-Rex as a 10-meter-long furry duck with claws longer than Freddy Krueger's. It might seem a paleontologist's sick fantasy, but no, you're looking at Therizinosaurus. It lived 70 million years ago and weighed about 3 tons, while its one claw was over 70 centimeters long, which is an absolute record among all creatures that have ever lived on Earth. Scientists thought they'd finally found a perfect predator that could slay anyone with a single swipe, but it soon turned out that Therizinosaurus was herbivorous and quite friendly. Though researchers are still arguing about the purpose of its gigantic claws, most probably Therizinosaurus used them to defend against T. rexes. Because when such dangerous predators were everywhere around, even herbivores needed to be armed with several deadly accessories. However, seemingly cute and ridiculous animals may sometimes turn out to be much more bloodthirsty. Tenostrophius lived about 230 million years ago and could grow as long as 6 meters. It looked like someone attached a snake to a giant gecko's body. That is quite awkward, isn't it? Moreover, Tenostrophius couldn't normally control its long neck as it only consisted of 6 vertebrae. For comparison, the neck of today's swan has 23 of them. At first, scientists were sure the clumsy Tenostrophius posed no threat to other species and only ate small fish. But analysis of its jaw structure proved the opposite. The aquatic reptile had long, sharp teeth which enabled it to tear up even large prey, while the sedentary neck turned its head into a deadly ram, gnawing through flesh. Nonetheless, in the age of dinosaurs, even little creatures could outclass giants. The tiny longest squama lived at the same time as Tenostrophius and was only 30 centimeters long. To have a chance to survive, it grew special antennae on its back. Nowadays, researchers think they were truly multifunctional. Using them, the tiny reptile not only attracted the opposite gender, but it could also glide in the air, jumping from great heights. Moreover, the antennae could accumulate solar heat to warm Longisquama at night. Some scientists are even sure it was a highly specific means of self-defense. Enormous dinosaurs supposedly took the antennae for thorns of inedible plants and didn't even try to hunt Longisquama. But other animals of the time could survive even without special tricks. Although Lystrosaurus was formerly a very ancient reptile even 255 million years ago, in fact, it really resembled a modern pig. Searching for food, it constantly dug the ground with its snout, just like today's hogs do. It did it using two sharp tusks on its upper jaw. They helped the beast find the deepest roots. But the most interesting thing is that in the world of cold-blooded dinosaurs, Lystrosaurus just like pigs, was warm-blooded, belonged to the Therospeda group, an intermediary evolutionary link between ancient reptiles and mammals. Those animals not only learned to regulate their body temperature themselves, but also became the first viviparous creatures on our planet. Probably, it helped them survive the Permian-Triassic mass extinction 251 million years ago is bearing offspring is much safer than laying eggs in a hostile environment. Most interestingly, other therapsids that evolved from Lystrosaurus are our ancestors as well. Do you feel the warm-blooded pig reptile's ancient power? Think of it while we're going deeper. What amazing animals dwelled on our planet before gigantic reptiles thronged it? Unfortunately, scientists rarely find anything in deeper layers of Earth's crust that relate to the Paleozoic era periods. But you'd hardly want to personally meet the creatures we already know. This is Gorgonops. It lived approximately 3 million years ago, and most probably, just like Lystrosaurus, belonged to Therapsids. But unlike its small, peaceful cousins, it could reach up to 4 meters in length 
and was an inborn killer with a whole arsenal of deadly tools. The saber-toothed Gorgonops' front fangs were placed in such way as to instantly immobilize prey in one bite. The ancient monster had a rather primitive brain, but its one area, the cerebellum, was developed better than the rest. This organ is responsible for coordination and brisk movements during an attack. The Gorgonops' hind limbs were longer than the forelegs and could unbend completely. In other words, the beast could attack even bigger animals when it stood on its hind legs. But the strangest thing is that on some of Gorgonops' skulls, they found bizarre structures, so-called electroreceptors. A similar thing is found in modern platypuses. The electroreceptors help them orient in water. It means Gorgonopses, if needed, could chase their prey underwater. It was virtually impossible to escape from the monster. Meanwhile, some other representatives of the ancient fauna could scare to death just with their appearance. In 1977, paleontologist Simon Conway Morris found strange fossils in British Columbia, Canada. Everything showed that the weird creatures lived about 500 million years ago. It was only three centimeters long and consisted of an oblong body entirely covered with odd appendages, two rows of spiky legs, and a row of tentacles on its back. One end of its body had a bulge, which scientists immediately identified as a head. However, they found no organs peculiar to this body part, eyes or mouth. All things considered, it seems this strange beast had its sensory organs on one of the tentacle sets. For a long time, researchers couldn't believe that something like that could really exist on Earth. So, they named the creature Hallucigenia, hinting that you could only see such a thing in a dream or a drug-induced delirium. Some paleontologists are positive that the Hallucigenia was a very specific centipede, having no analogs among known insects. This suggestion is so far impossible to prove, but at least we can be happy that another prehistoric centipede didn't make it to modern times. 300 million years ago, Arthropleura crawled around Earth's forests, presumably making disgusting, rustling noises, but you'd hardly be afraid you could step on it by accident. The Arthropleura would probably crawl over you, as it was up to two meters long. Besides, the creature's shell was much tougher than modern arthropods' bodies, so not every predator could bite through it. But even animals with really sharp fangs rarely attempted to kill Arthropleura, as apart from all the rest, it could spit venom. And to hit the bullseye, the insect could stand on its hind limbs and draw itself erect. So next time you're scared of a centipede in the kitchen, think that at least you won't have to fight an over two meter tall monster spraying venom in your eyes. 300 million years ago, Arthropleura virtually had no enemies, except maybe a prehistoric scorpion, Pteragotus, which lived at about the same time. In its size, it was as large as the ancient centipede. Its body length was around two meters. On its head, Pteragotus had a number of omatidia, special vision organs that altogether made parts of the eye. It allowed the giant scorpion to see its surroundings from different angles simultaneously and find its prey even if it took good cover. But Pteragotus' most terrible weapon was its claws. Each of them had a dozen sharp spikes, so when the scorpion closed its forelimbs, they pierced through the prey. Pteragotus didn't even have to chew its prey, as thanks to the claws, it could shred it up before swallowing it. Moreover, this ancient scorpion was one of the first creatures on Earth which began making ambushes instead of chasing its prey. Initially, scientists thought the animal lived around water bodies and often swam. But recent research suggests that the scorpion most probably spent a great deal of time underwater, just like today's crocodiles. Perfect place for an ambush. But the deep antiquity seas hid a lot of even more exotic creatures. What unbelievable beasts roamed the oceans millions of years ago? 
Among such was Helicoprion, which first emerged around 290 million years ago. It was something like a 10-meter-long shark, but with an absolutely incredible jaw. Modern sharks shed old teeth, making space for new ones. Helicoprion never dropped its teeth. The new teeth simply replaced the old ones, moving them to the front, and they went spiral together with the jaw. It resulted in something like a scary saw on the chin. Besides, Helicoprion's huge mouth opened much wider than that of modern sharks. It captured prey with the backward bent front teeth, then closed the mouth abruptly, and the spiral toothed jaw automatically shredded the prey. Though with such a torture device at tilt, Helicoprion couldn't swim fast. But the next monster succeeded even in that. Dunkleosteus, the prehistoric fish, lived as much as 350 million years ago and could grow up to 15 meters long and weighed about four tons. It caught literally anything in its way with its mouth. Surprisingly enough, one of the most furious marine predators had no teeth at all. Instead, it had a pair of bone razors. Solid, sharp plates simply chopped prey, just like a butcher's axe. Dunkleosteus bite force was about 7,500 newtons. To compare, a human's bite force is only 300 newtons. But the most significant advantage the ancient monster had was its agility. Dunkleosteus could plow through the water at a speed of a small motorboat, up to 40 kilometers per hour, and it took it only 20 milliseconds to open its mouth. You'd literally be dead in the blink of an eye. At high speed, the water flow dragged prey into the Dunkleosteus' mouth, so all it had to do was shut it. And this ancient fish was so aggressive that it often attacked its own kin. Numerous marks left by the typical bone razors on fossil Dunkleosteus prove it. But what about even more ancient exotic animals? Most of the fossils of more or less large creatures we found come from the Cambrian period, which began approximately 538 million years ago. The pre-Cambrian era was long considered the period of unicellular organisms, until one incredible discovery. In 1957, two schoolchildren climbing mountains in Charnwood, the UK, found strange imprints among rocks. The children invited researchers from the local university to look at the traces in the stone, but the scholars were skeptical. The region's rocks formed in the pre-Cambrian era, and the scientists didn't expect to see anything interesting. How wrong they were. At closer inspection of the rocks, they found imprints of large plants, which had been previously believed impossible. And when the scientists began studying other pre-Cambrian residues, they found many more mysterious fossils. This bizarre creature, Tribrachidium, lived 560 million years ago and had a unique, complex anatomy. It consisted of three segments, each ending with a tentacle. Its length could vary. Perhaps those creatures back then, in deep antiquity, developed sexual dimorphism and females looked different from males. This find radically changed paleontologists' view of how life on our planet evolved. Now, they can't attribute Tribrachidium to any of the known animal groups. But this fascinating antique fauna also had bloodthirsty predators. In the mid-20th century, Australian geologist Reginald Sprigg found an odd fossil animal that was eventually named after him. Sprigina turned out even more ancient than Tribrachidium and had a characteristic shape that resembles an oval or an arrow. It had a soft body covered with tiny spikes and bulges. Sprigina was initially assigned to a group of mollusk-like organisms, but later research revealed that its anatomy didn't match any of the existing animal groups. Moreover, cholesterol molecules were found in its fossils, which may indicate that Sprigina was a predator. The specific structure of its body plates can be another proof of it. Assuming that Sprigina participated in bloody fights, 
it could cause severe injuries to its opponents using its plates. So even half a billion years ago, before the gigantic dinosaurs and other beasts appeared, you'd barely be able to walk safely on Earth. Nevertheless, some researchers of antiquity think we only see a part of the Precambrian picture of the world. They believe that Sprigina, Tribrachidium, and other finds from that period might only be fragments of other, more complex living beings that only left a partial imprint in stone. There's even a theory according to which we deal with the traces of real aliens that attempted to colonize Earth by bringing a zoo of beasts from the other world. But the most interesting thing is that owing to the acute lack of information about the Precambrian period, it's simply impossible to refute this theory scientifically. What about you? Do you think that the most unusual animals of the past could be visitors from space?